Good morning, everybody. This is uh, Patrick Montes Dioca with the uh, Equity Management Academy Live Trading Room, live streaming from Ticket Talker. Uh, we are in a trading mode this morning, so uh, I'm going to produce some uh, signals directly. GBTC, if you have a profit on GBTC, sell half of it. If you have a profit on GBTC, sell half of it. We have completed targets in gold at 1832. And the market in gold is sharply higher this morning. Silver is sharply higher. And we are completing targets here as we enter into the distribution area of supply. 1842 is the next target in gold. Silver 2752 has completed all our targets. And if you have multiples, obviously uh, the last target would be 2764 to go neutral. We've been long since uh, uh, the uh, 2680 levels here, and we are now uh, pretty much looking at the extreme above above the mean into that 2765 level. Hold on to coin. Um, the volatility in coin is obviously uh, tremendous as uh, we begin to see the uh, ETF trade more actively here in the virtual world of Coinbase. Um, let's watch the uh, silver and gold market here for a little bit here and see if uh, we can see some adjusting in the first 15 or 20 minutes or so, but uh, this is looking pretty pretty good for us. We've been recommending these targets here. And uh, please manage your profits according to your profile, particularly in my trading room. Uh, traders in my trading room pretty much know what uh, what the methodology is here. And so um, in terms of the futures, the targets have been completed. In terms of the derivatives, um, you want to hold on to the derivatives. And possibly, if you want to, when we accomplish the target of 1842, depending upon what the market does up there, you may want to synthesize or hedge your position. So let's watch the market here for a little bit. It's a trading day today, and we want to focus on capitalizing and pretty much like an end of profits here that we've been expecting. Reduce your profits on GBTC and continue to hold the balance. Uh, 
I'm going to go flat in uh, in gold, and you know we booked twenty five hundred and fifty dollars on this trade, so that's a pretty decent profit. Let's take a look at silver. Silver has made a nice move, and we want to go flat on the silver as well. So we're going to lock in for four thousand one hundred and eighty one dollars in the silver market. Continue to hold your derivatives long. And um, let's see pretty much what the market does up here as it's supposed to be uh, signaling for us that this area here between the cell 1 of 1835 and cell 2 of 1842 is a distribution area of supply, meaning that you can see sellers supply come into the market as you see here. Um, and if we close below 1835, the daily the daily uh, signal would be activating a short term short trigger for day traders. Now. The fact that the market is trading above the cell one level of 1835, which is the resistance level, where once resistance is broken, it becomes support. So what we do in here is as the market trades back and forth in here, it's testing the support, resistance, support, resistance, and, and the variation is the variable changing price momentum indicator that activates the signal on the close. The trigger points are under close. Now, trigger points can be negated. As you can see here, it gave you a chance for you to make a few dollars. From 1833, it made a low of 1831.90. The first thing is you lock in your trailing stop, which is what I say. So in here, if you did that, you would have gotten stopped out. And, you know, follow the same methodology uh, for conservative traders, a close above it would stop you out. So you're getting uh, mixed signals here, you know, where the market is activating these triggers, but it's finding buyers underneath enough with enough strength that it is taking the supply at this level of 1835. And you can see the trading back and forth in here uh, in, until the market comes in with some major reversion and buyers come in turning this resistance into support of 1835 and obviously activating the target above of 1842 which is still very active for today 1841.50 was the high so for all intents and purposes it came within the distance to satisfy the previous pattern mathematically now the market is trading above this now support 1835 becomes support once the market trades above it and is giving you a uh, low probability uh, by signal uh, from here to 1842 it's about a five percent probability that we could accomplish that target therefore if the market closes above 1842, the daily program will go neutral. It completed the pattern. Then you look at the weekly signal, which is long from the average of 1814, and the target for that weekly signal is 1863. Okay, so it defines sp uh, uh, specifically uh, the structure for day trading, the targets, your protective levels, and also it integrates with the weekly signals and, and also the monthly 
the monthly target of 1850. Now, I pointed out before to uh, my audience here in the live streaming, as well as I emphasize, obviously, in my trading room very much the harmonic relationship that occurs, which is the optimal level mathematically of the algorithm. And here we see 1850 is a, a pretty um, realistic target that is harmonically aligned with a Fibonacci retracement of 38.2%. And it's into the area of distribution of supply, which incorporates the daily, the weekly, and the monthly now. So I would say to you, this area of 1850 is like a magnet, okay, that I, all the way up to 1863, I would be um, paying attention to the uh, volatility and the volume at that point, because um, upon completion of these targets here, the higher that we go, the higher the probabilities, and we can run up all the way to 1893 once this uh, weekly signal is completed. I'm not sure, well, I shouldn't say that, but anything is possible. Today, we, we, we're we going to see 1893, but 1863 is, is closer, it's more probable, but 1850 now is my key number particularly if we see it today. So we are getting buying into this area of distribution of supply. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> In the silver market is pretty much the same, the same scenario. Um, the market is trading. Actually, the silver market is a little stronger uh, this morning than the gold market. And the target of 2741 has been completed. And uh, we're looking at uh, the next target of 2765. Nice looking bar. Um, target 1842 in gold, and then we 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 see where we go from there. But uh, very strong buying in metals. We got a little bit of a pullback here on coin.
waiting for confirmation to add to coin as we take profits on GBTC. And we are long on gold and silver derivatives. want to bring some of these securities up here. As you can see, the uh, great thing about this algorithm is that uh, you can analyze just about any any instrument uh, that uh, you want to watch, whether it's a future security ETF. And it gives you instantly the uh, algorithms, the targets, the levels for you to trade this market intelligently. And we cover about uh, 80, 80 markets. It's a universal uh, application that is uh, um, basically a uh, an algorithm uh, that is a momentum, that is a momentum algorithm. The VCPMI stands for the Variable Changing Price Momentum Indicator. And the data is extrapolated based on the uh, information provided individually by each product. And once we uh, uh, input uh, that information, then we can extrapolate the uh, uh, algorithm to give us daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, and cyclical information that we can apply so it, it does an incredible amount of work uh, for you self-directed traders uh, and it saves obviously the time for you to focus on what is the most important thing here and that is to book profits you don't need to analyze where the market is going i've given up and trying to figure that out and what I have become is very robotic in my trading, which is what I would suggest and recommend most people that are beginning to use this, or if you're just joining us, that the benefit of this essentially is the robotic uh, concept of trading without um, using emotion, without using you know the rhetoric, or without uh, using the, all the information and that's provided in, in, in now or in, in the internet, which can be misleading. You want to take a look at what the market is telling you. And um, even though it is not 100% accurate, okay, nothing is. It gives you a structure mathematically for you to make intelligent decisions for your trading, whether you're a day trader, swing trader, position trader, long-term investor. I choose to trade the gold, silver, and more actively trading uh, coin, uh, trading virtual assets like GBTC, for example, um, which is a great trading instrument. But uh, it's not a currency. It's not uh, as most people um, are trying to uh, kind of put the uh, uh, you know product into a currency category. And it's just not a currency. It's a trading. It's a virtual trading vehicle. And obviously, it's becoming more prominent because of the tremendous amount of wealth that's been built over the past uh, just few years, the last 10 years. 
And so I uh, uh, would not be surprised that uh, in the very near future, we begin to see central banks globally issuing virtual currencies. And, and I think we, we're moving into that environment pretty much where I, I, it's, it's not just going to be one virtual currency. I think we're going to be inundated as we are already with different uh, uh, currencies, virtual currencies. Um, and you want to be careful. You know, you want to be careful in terms of where you put your money into with regards to virtual currencies. I choose to use a GBTC as an indicator. It's the uh, Bitcoin Grayscale Investment Trust. And, uh, um, you know, it uh, follows the algorithm. Uh, the signals are pretty good. We're producing some really great profits on this market. Our clients are beginning to understand how to apply the VCPMI into the virtual related assets. Uh, anything that is highly volatile, liquid, obviously, uh, it will apply using the VCPMI. As I was uh, commenting uh, yesterday, or the day that uh, essentially it was a couple of days ago, I believe we had the economic indicators come out. Um, the CPI was the uh, had the biggest jump uh, since uh, 2008, 4.2 percent, and you know ordinarily you would think that a a, uh, a move like that would be very bullish for precious metals. And, you know, as far as I can remember, in in uh, in times when we uh, did see this uh, in in the 80s, for example, or 90s, whenever we got the, the uh, or what I should say is there was a closer relationship in the reaction of the gold market to the to the economic indicators. And and I think what we're seeing is that uh, the uh, market is beginning to recognize that that information is not really tradable and so it's become a contrarian trader uh, trading concept so to speak of buying the rumor that you know the CPI is going to go up and as we've been talking about since gold came down to 1677 you know 1700s you know we interest rates started going up the 10 year note went to 177 and uh, the gold market basically collapsed to, you know, 1677 levels. Um, from there, obviously, we have seen a rally all the way to where we are now, close to about 1842. And this is what I mean by the gold market trading on its own merits, on its own technicals, primarily, does not adhere to the fundamentals. And point in case, you know, since uh, August of uh, last year, when the market made a high of, you know, 2000 and, 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 and uh, 89, even in silver here that I have the chart, for example, 
The high was 30.35 under Reddit news, the squeeze, the short squeeze. 30.35 was it. And the market retreated, reverted from those levels. Until, until now, you see, that we, we have reverted from the lows in silver, particularly of 23.74, made on March 31st. A lot of money was lost here following the uh, herd, so to speak. This is a very good example of what following the herd means. And uh, the market came all the way down at 23.74 to test those levels. And that's where the buying came in. That was the capitulation of this correction that um, wiped out a lot of traders, particularly young traders that do not understand. You don't want to follow the herd and not get slaughtered you know uh but looking at the chart now reverting from these levels here it looks like a beautiful head and shoulder bottom formation we're coming out of this bearish flag we're breaking out if we uh look at this uh, pattern from the recent high, yeah, this little formation here looks like a little flag. And that's a bearish flag, and that's a pretty good, that's a bullish signal using conventional technical analysis. And, you know, it's into this area of distribution of supply that points all the way up to 2829. The signal that you see here is a harmonic relationship the market coming down to a low of 2678 yesterday closing at 2718 activated a daily bullish price trend momentum a weekly bullish price trend momentum and the targets you can see right above it are 2741 2765 for the daily and 2829 for the weekly signal very clear <clears throat> so what the ai tells us here is that we should expect trading up here we should expect supply is going to be offered here, as you can see, is pretty much what the market action looks today. <clears throat> and so we're comfortable in booking the profits as we did and letting the market define the energy here, define the uh, supply or demand, and you know, complete the patterns or the targets that needs to be, that needs to be done. There will be, you know, back and forth gyrations, um, particularly, again, when you enter into this area of red, which is called the distribution of supply, uh, which you see here, even just on the radar screen, 
the market is trading above the sell one level on, on gold, trading above the sell one level in silver with a target of 2764. Forty one fifty three. It, the mini is trading above the sell one level of 41.53. Let me bring the charts up here to see if I can. The uh, mini S and P is entering the sell one level as you see here completing the uh, target the sell one target it's up 46 and the second target that has been activated is 4186 so it is into an overbought condition entering the distribution of supply area but it is very bullish it's got a lot of muscle, so to speak, a lot of buying uh, force, a lot of buying strength, volume is taken over the supply that's being offered here. So we seem to have gotten the uh, indices, or at least the S&P, into overbought territory. The silver is into overbought territory. Gold is into overbought territory. Copper is into overbought territory. And with the... Uh, bullish momentum uh, that we have here um, I'm looking at you know possibly completing the upper end of the extreme levels above the mean which is the sell to level ideally we want to see that level again uh, harmonically aligned itself with the daily the weekly and the monthly data to give us that harmonic most optimal level to execute a signal. Coin is an extremely volatile uh, instrument um, and you want to measure that volatility, you know, according to your profile. I always uh, say that when you are taking a look at these instruments, uh, I don't, you know, I think what, what you want to look at is not, you know, where the market is going, as most people tend to uh, uh, see, but more in terms of how to manage the volatility of that instrument, which is really the key to getting you to complete the targets. What we want to trade, obviously, is the volatility, the volume, the liquidity of the instrument. And, you know, with this new instruments that we have, these virtual currencies instruments, they're fantastic to trade. It activated a a buy signal here from the buy one level when you take a look at the coin 
and um, huge volatility in, in, in one session. But now we're getting um, bullish signals being activated from the buy one level. The average price is about 290 that we're looking at for the day on Bitcoin. I'm sorry, on coin, on Coinbase, Bitcoin is 39.49. It completed the uh, first target that you see here. Thirty-nine ninety-one. So, you know, you can see the uh, systematic approach in in what we do here with uh, how we trade these markets is basically by using the uh, vcpmi to create a very specific structure for us uh, whether we are day trading swing trading or uh, position trading we have a very specific structure that uh, that we follow here and uh, execute the uh, pretty much the signals that are being given. We're looking at uh, silver here coming back down into that 2741 area once again, uh, which is the support. And so it's trading back and forth here and um, closing below 3741 would activate a short term bearish signal. But once again, it is going to be choppy here as we are trying to define basically the volume of sellers against buyers. And if we get more sellers than buyers here, then we're going to be activating a short trigger. This would be on the close of the 15 minute bar at 745. This first bar is activating a trade a, a, a trade alert not a signal but a trade alert the first bar is a trade alert so the signal on the conservative side would be at about eight o'clock pacific standard time that would come in that a close below that would signal a short trigger now you know it's up to you how you want to manage the risk you know and what instrument obviously um, what I'm doing here is I'm showing you how I use this GPS, this uh, program as a GPS to identify for me day trading opportunities, short term trading or long term trading opportunities. As far as day trading is concerned, once again, targets have been completed for gold and silver. Continue to hold your derivative position with a um, long bias or a bullish bias in gold, silver, Coinbase, and GBTC as well. But once again, be aware of the volatility.
trading below 41 on the silver. So it's penetrated that 41 level and it's activated a pretty much an active signal here that if it closes below 42, it creates a short trigger. Now, if you're an aggressive trader, um, you can, you know, sell this bar if it closes below 41. You can go short here and put your stop right above it. Conservatively, a close above it would stop you out if you want to look to be going short. Um, so we'll keep an eye on this signal here, which uh, seems to be testing the sell one level in the gold and in the silver market. And at the end of this bar, it's going to tell us what that trade alert is. It closed below 2741, it's bearish. A close above, it's a bullish confirmation and continuation pattern. And that 2741, a close above it will make it support. Same thing for, uh, for the gold market. Eighteen thirty five fifty. Eighteen thirty five is the uh, sell one level. Continue to uh, hold your derivatives long until we see and get up to at least 1850. The gold market closed um, 1834.90, closed slightly lower, but uh, I'm not doing anything here on, on this. On the signals here, uh, the market is pretty powerful, so uh, I'm going to reserve again, you know, the uh, right to enter into this trade as I see the underlying derivatives uh, following a very strong market to the upside. The thing that uh, the VCPMI does when the price enters into this uh, red zone of distribution of supply is that there's a lot of trading going on, you know, in deciding whether buyers are stronger uh, than the sellers, whether the buying is in stronger hands than the sellers. And when you're talking about the sellers in silver and gold, you, you primarily are talking about uh, central bank selling. And I think this is the area where, you know, potentially if there is going to be uh, that type of uh, selling going on, it will be from these levels. You see here the uh, silver market trading in this level and it's negating. It's it's going to be choppy pretty much with an upward bias. So with the market being up as strong as it is right now, I would be uh, inclined to buy the corrections. 
okay, to buy the corrections as opposed to selling uh, right into this into this uh, levels because the market is breaking out and if we get out if we get above uh, 2765 then we're looking at 2829 which is what the weekly signal is indicating from a harmonically aligned level daily weekly which is a, a pretty strong pretty strong combination identifying the bullish price trend momentum and activating all the way up to 28.29. What we have done here is complete the daily target, the first daily target of 27.41. The second is 27.65. After that is the, the weekly of 28.29. Let's just continue to monitor the market here. Eighteen thirty-six sixty on the gold. We're getting some buying in here. We're getting um, a good level of uh, support from this from this level here. Again, once the price trades that resistance level, it becomes support for the next higher fractal in price.
1836.50 in gold trading above the uh, resistance of 1835. So continue uh, to maintain what I believe is an upward bias here. Uh, we took some profits on the long side in futures and we're holding on to derivatives long. And I, I think um, we want to maintain this position here until until next week. May usually is a uh, bearish month for pretty much I think most most uh, most uh, most of the market here and they have a saying which uh, essentially is sell in May and go away um, even for the stock market and, and so but um, the way that, uh, you know, we, we are dealing with this monetary system, with this monetary crisis, um, is actually potentially very, very explosive here for, for precious metals, obviously, uh, with the, uh, tremendous amount of stimulus that's coming into the market. Um, and there's another 4 trillion that I believe is being negotiated. Um, it is a staggering amount of money uh, that uh, is flooding the market. And, you know, when, 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 I, when you come down to it and you take a look at the reality of the situation, you know, I'm not so sure that uh, the system needs um, more liquidity as, as, as they claim to be. Um, <clears throat> pretty much negotiating. The problem is that, <clears throat> excuse me, most of the stimulus that's being negotiated, it's not necessarily going directly, you know, in in where it's supposed to go. Um, you know, it's been used, uh, you might say, as an excuse to uh, create more money. But, uh, you know, money is uh, uh, being abused, I believe, more than uh, being helpful to the economy. I don't, you know, we don't see, um, if you just take a look at the unemployment numbers, people, you know, are, you know, happier staying home and getting the government subsidies as opposed to going out getting work. So it's not helping the economy from that, from that extent. Uh, and things are a little bit out of whack. They're um, still, we're dealing with the transformation of the old economy into this brand new virtual economy and you know we haven't yet come out on the other side and there is still a lot of risk involved in 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 the monetary system uh, the dollar is being uh, questioned in terms of the its integrity and its purchasing power as the world's reserve currency and and you know currencies are imploding on the face of what this global pandemic has done which is to create um an economic, an economic chaos. Uh, it has broken the system, and uh, you know we are in the process of resetting that system into a new uh, system, and you know uh, pretty much uh, bringing in this uh, uh, opportunities here that are called virtual currencies in, into a virtual economy, e-commerce. E you know, so uh, it's definitely a new world. And, and it's an exciting world, it's tremendous opportunities, as you can see here. So I would welcome any changes uh, that are taking place because it's hopefully for the benefit of us. But for you, as a self-directed individual, it's upon you to take the responsibility to monetize out of the situations, which is what I do every day, uh, you know, in order for me to make a living, in order for my family, in order for my friends, my traders to produce the liquidity flow, the income that they want to have. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for this incredible platform, this great opportunity to share this 
thoughts and ideas and opinions, but more than anything else to show you a trading vehicle that you can use as a GPS to control your trading. You are the master of your own destiny. Remember that. Have a great day, my friends. Until next time, you take care. Talk to you soon. The risk of loss in trading commodity interests can be substantial. You should therefore carefully consider whether such trading is suitable for you in light of your financial condition, and considering whether to trade or to authorize someone else to trade for you. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. I know the markets. I know how to make money. I would love to teach you what I know. I'm Stephen Klajian, and I've been day trading for over 38 years. You know, 